Okay, I am the host now. <laughs> okay. Gosh, Mike, scare me. What did did I get this disconnected or? It yeah, said the you host. Got, you got disconnected and it ended, so I had to restart it. Yeah, the whole thing? I, we all got disconnected. Okay, so let me see what. Okay, can I share my screen yet? We were doing like, math. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't know who. Uh, yeah, you were you were doing math with Fred Flintstone. You were just going to start. Uh, yeah, but it says who can Good share night. screen. It says mm -hmm. host only. Uh, you should be. Hold on. You are the host. More. You think? More. Yep. It won't let me do anything. Um. Let me do. So I'm doing share down at the bottom, yep. host only. Hmm. Seven people in the waiting room. Why don't you take my host permissions away and give them back to me? Because I use Zoom every day and uh, never seen this one happen. Let's see. Duncan is a host now. It crashed for some reason. Yeah. Oh, Walter was garbled up i could barely hear him a lot okay so am i call i didn't get the co-host window pop up that says i can share my screen yet can kelly help me on that one host disabled participant screening okay your host now mike i told, I told you to be fun yeah your host uh, now mike how do I do that? It won't let me share my screen. Oh, here we go. Let's see now. All right. Uh, let that, 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 uh, okay, oh, uh, Mike, I'm sorry to interrupt. Duncan, make sure you press record again, please. It is recording. Okay. Excellent. Uh, sorry, okay. everyone. Sometimes, you know, it's online technical difficulties, but it looks like everybody's getting back on now. Okay, so I'm going to try to fire this puppy up and uh, let's see how this works. Okay. Now, how is that doing that? Mike, Hold you're on, old school here. <laughs> I'm what? <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I'm old school. That's for sure. That's, you're like me. So I'm going to ask, well, Mike's figuring this out in the chat. Um, please put all the information you had back in there. And just at the end of the call, uh, just make sure you do a copy and paste of the chat log if you want to save all that information to put it all in because there was a lot of good connection I got it. in there. All right, Mike, back over to you. Okie dokie. All right. So we're back on board now. Somebody say yes or no. Yeah, you're good. If you see anybody pop in, though, just press admit because we're probably down 10 or so people since since there. Okay. Oh, so I got to do that? Uh, yeah, unless you want to make Kelly a host, co-host. Yeah, make Kelly a co-host. I can't. I'm not the host anymore. Yeah, please so make me the co-host so you don't have to worry about that, Mike. <laughs> oh, so I have to do that? Let me see. Yeah, just make her a co-host. Co -host. Man, this is strange. Kelly. Yeah. Now you can do it. All right. Because I right. can't do two, three more things at one time anymore. Okay. <laughs> we'll just consider that a commercial break. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sponsored by. All right. Here we go. So back to the quick, simple summary. We were doing the math, Fred Flintstone math. So uh, $10,000 is number one answer of most folks for their happy camper number to have direct deposit into your bank account every month. So a quick, simple summary here. If each of your 20 nice rental houses rents for a thousand bucks a month, let's be very, very, uh, this thing's drive. Okay. It says admit. I'm still getting the admit. Okay. Um, and each one rents for a thousand bucks. Let's subtract 50% for property taxes, insurance, repairs, and management. Now, one thing you will not see in here is vacancy because we're talking about single family houses and single family rentals. They stay eight plus years. I still got some properties I bought in the early 90s, still got the same tenant in it from day one. So 
Now, if you're doing multifamily and apartments, you better factor in vacancies, okay? So 50% is very, very high. If you self-manage in my town, your overhead's 30%, okay? And if you hire a property manager, add on another 10%, that would be 40%. I'm going even more and doing 50%, okay? So 1,000 minus 500 leaves you how much? Okay, that leaves you. Why ain't it doing it? There we go. So a net income of 500 bucks per house. And how many of these houses you got paid for? 20 of them? Guess what? 10,000 potatoes every month right into your bank account. Now, the challenge is a lot of folks tell me and you, they don't want to wait 30 years or 25 years to do it. So I'm going to show you how to do it in three to five years with your job. Okay, because that's exactly how I did. It sounds like Walter probably did that too. He just set his mind to it and boom, you're off to the races. Okay. My bride's looking at me. Kelly said howdy and so did Duncan. Okay, so real estate investing 101. We got to cover this. Okay, there's a business side of real estate investing and then there's an investing side. So the business side, that creates chunks of cash now. Buy and sell, wholesale, flips, buy, fix up, retail. Uh, being a real estate agent. And so when you talk about flips and fixer uppers that you're going to sell in retail, that's no different than having a used car lot. And so then every Tuesday you go down to the wholesale auction, you buy a car at a wholesale price, bring it back to your lot, put some lipstick on it, and then sell it for a higher price. Well, guess what happens when you stop buying cars at the auction? Well, no more income. And that kind of income is the highest tax rate that you can get because that's earned income. It's like you got to do something to earn that income, okay? That's the business side of it. Now, we've got the investing side. Now, the investing side is buy and hold real estate. It could be rentals, TikTok, ka -ching, direct deposits, auto deposits. And, and, and here's where Kiyosaki, Kiyosaki, I almost put an R in his name, like I'm from Boston. <laughs> but anyway... So because you own it, it puts money in your pocket. It's kind of cool, isn't it? So think about that. If you got 20 nice rentals or 20 nice apartment communities or 20 nice anything that you own and you oh. rent the stuff out, then you're going to get direct deposit money because you own it. And guess what? That's passive income and that's taxed at a lower rate. At least for now it is, okay? So which one's best for you? Here's what I say. Yes, for real estate business and yes, for real estate investing. So I would, when I got, when I was buying a hundred rental houses a year, I would take two or three of those a year and I would buy, fix up and sell, or I would wholesale some of them if I got too many in the pipeline. Now, what was cool about what I was doing, my focus was on real estate investing, not the real estate business side. And so I would generate chunks of cash and I was allowed, I, for IRS reasons, I'm not a CPA, okay, but my CPA told me that if, that I could do some wholesale deals, buy fixer-uppers and sell them at retail and do that to help me achieve my real estate investing goals faster. So I just wanted to let you know what's best for you. I say both of them, but focus on your real estate investing, because I tell you what, when you get those puppies paid off, guys. It is a wonderful feeling to be able to get up and do what you want every day. Now, you can continue to do, well, I'm just not going to get into that. All right. So how am I doing so far? Is it simple? Are you getting it? I hope so. So who is Mike Butler, if you've never heard of me? Why you should listen very closely to me? Well, I grew up in Louisville, Kentucky. That's Colonel Sanders and the Kentucky Derby. I grew up just a few blocks from Churchill Downs. That's home of the Kentucky Derby. Oldest of seven kids, and I was raised in a two-bedroom, one-bath home. That would be unlegal today, wouldn't it? And I bought my first house before I was 20 years old. That's a picture of it. One block from Churchill Downs. And so I show you these photos because uh, I want to show you what success in my neighborhood was all about. So any of the kids I went to school with, none of their parents were CPAs, attorneys, or doctors. Most of them, they had a good factory job somewhere, and, you know, their goal was to get their house paid for, retire, and then get themselves a ride more, duct tape a cooler onto it, drink some beer, and then go hunting and fishing on the weekends. So if they had a mediocre job, they got a ride more, it looks something like this. <laughs> okay, and if they had a great job at a good factory, well, then they got a better ride more, it looks something like this. Well, I'll tell you what, I wanted more than that for my kids and my family when I grew up. I didn't want people from church to bring over boxes of used shoes 
for me and my brothers and sisters to go through to see which ones fit. I didn't want my kids to experience that. And so I just wanted more. And in 1987, I get hired as a police officer in my hometown. Yeah, that's what I looked like back then, a real truth. That's me, okay? Nothing like today. But I had a huge handicap um, when I started uh, being getting serious about my real estate investing. Had my full-time job now. And so I'm going to show you my handicap I had. I look like this, okay? And I did uh, long-term under... I, I went from plain clothes detective doing long-term undercover work, murder, murder for hire contract killings, organized crime. And while then, doing this, okay... I averaged buying two and a quarter houses every single week. And I only had about five hours a week to do it in because I had a full-time job. I was a dad. I was a hubby. I had to sell Girl Scout cookies and basketball games and PTA. You know what I'm talking about. So if you've got a job, if you've got a family, I mean, how many hours can you devote to, to your real estate business? It's very, very precious. So I figured out how to pull this off in five hours a week. Now, I started out with, I didn't have a bunch of money. No, no. I had less than $1,000 in the police officer's credit union. My wife was in nursing school, and I, had, and I was married and had two daughters. So I didn't have a, you know, some. I'm not a trust baby or silver spoon fed or any of that. No, 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 no. So anyway, I've never gone to a bank to buy an investment property, even to this day. I've never used a hard money lender, never used a private lender. Always, always had a real closing and get the deed. No kitchen table closings to outlaw those. That's not good business, guys. And always, always get title insurance. Okay. So I owned and operated. Okay. As I was growing my real estate business, I had 75 rental properties while working my full-time job. And I spent the majority of a, a beautiful Saturday doing nothing but listening to voicemail messages, returning phone calls. And I blew the whole day and I said, you know what? I did not get this real estate to do this. Okay. So then I hired a part-time office person to work five hours in my basement office so that I wouldn't have to do that. And that was the first, well, first office person I hired. So, um, and oh, well, I just thought you need to know that because you can do this too. Money Magazine, I was featured in that, uh, in this article, can real estate make you rich? The magazine's gone today, but I was featured in it three different times. And that's my wife in the background there where a tenant started managing the, the wife. The, the landlord died. His wife didn't know how to manage rental properties. And so uh, I bought the house and we evicted the tenant. My wife is back there saying that's cheaper than stuff she can find at Walmarts. Okay. And, <clears throat> okay. and then we get a speaking coach. Duncan's had one. I bet Walter has had one. And uh, when my speaking coach learned about this, he says, Mike, you got to tell folks this. This guy that grew up by Churchill Downs in a blue collar, poor neighborhood, poor end of Louisville, Kentucky, my annual rent rental income exceeds a million dollars a year. And I'm not telling you that to brag. There goes my daggone hairs on the back of my neck again. It still sounds bizarre. It still sounds like it's way over the moon, something I could just dream about. But he says, I need to share that with you guys. Because why would they, why should they should listen to me? Why you should listen to me? So I'm not saying that to brag, um, but I was coached and told to share that with you. So big question, why am I doing this? One of my passions is making millionaires, creating millionaires, helping investors just like you who can make a decision and take action. You got to be able to take action, guys. And without a bunch of hype or pie in the sky BS. Okay, I'm, I hope you agree with me. And I can say this, I wish I had an opportunity to learn from somebody like me when I was getting started. Here's your opportunity right now to start off with. Now, today's market and economy, okay? Inflation has run amok, hadn't it? Gas, groceries, interest rates, rents, real estate, you name it, it's gone up, hasn't it? Look at the running out of baby formula, running out of this, running out of that. Insane crazy, okay? And there's nothing me and you can do about it individually. Even if we were to get a group together, we still couldn't do anything about it. The challenge is, how do you fix it? How do you adapt? How do you uh, protect yourself? Okay, do you see opportunities here? I think so. So it reminds me of this little book called Who Moved My Cheese? All right. So we've been through this before. So where's the cheese? Let me tell you about a famous Kentucky proverb, okay? He who finds the cheese firstest wins the mostest. 
Okay. And this has happened several times in my real estate investing career. Example, locally, we had, uh, you probably do this before the internet, they used to put HUD homes in the Sunday newspaper in the classifieds. And then we would go downtown on Broadway, the main, where the U.S., the federal building is, and you'd pick up a bid package of papers to fill out to buy a HUD house. Well, guess what? They shut that down in Louisville, Kentucky, and they moved it to Indianapolis. Okay. Well, I had a pretty sharp broker agent that I worked with, and he was on top of that, and he would drive my offers up there. Well, guess what? Everybody else in Louisville, real estate agents, investors, they're just whining and complaining and all this and that. I was my broke my broker agent would drive up to Indianapolis, hand deliver the paper bid package, and I was winning bids without any competition. So I found the cheese firstest and won the mostest. They did the same thing in Indianapolis and moved it to Chicago. My guy again drove up to Chicago. So that's what the, that's what's going on right now. And that just gives you a simple analogy of what I'm trying to compare it to. So that's pretty good. So let's take a look at interest rates. Quick review. Let's say from 2010 to 2022, we've had per near 0%, okay, as far as the prime goes, the feds and all this and that. So a 30-year fixed rate loan for home buyers, okay, and new investors up to 10 loans, you were seeing anywhere from 2.5%, 3% loans. Wow, okay. And we've got a whole new generation of investors out there. And you guys have been spoiled for taking these low rates for granted. I can remember, you know, I still attend my local RIA group meetings every once in a while. And for them to think, these new, this new generation of investors to think, oh, 7% loans. Oh, the rates ain't never going to get up to that again. Well, guess what? <laughs> yeah, they already have. So RIA groups, when, the, when, when everything, when we've got too many buyers, not enough properties for sale, Common sense says what? Supply and demand, prices go up. Okay, when the interest rates are super low, guess what? People can buy more house, right? Yeah. So RIA groups, this happened in the last his, uh, real estate cycle when we had the foreclosure tsunami and all that. But RIA groups, they were growing up until that point, right? Everybody jumped on the real estate bandwagon. Look at your RIA groups across America right now. They're flocking again, real estate investor groups, landlord groups, investor associations, whatever. Their membership has just exploded over the last five, six, eight years, okay? And, and folks have flocked to get on the real estate investing bandwagon. I've seen it before, okay? And the old timers have seen this before. Well, the same thing happened back in 2000 to 2009 or so. <clears throat> there, there was a growing trend of folks, sorry about that. So more on interest rates. So the feds claim they're raising the rates to curb inflation. I don't buy that. You shouldn't either. In May of 22, they raised it a half a point. In June, they were talking about raising it half a point or three. They raised it a full point. All right. Last month, they raised it another three quarters of a point. Look how much it's gone up in just the last few months, few months here. And they're forecasting up to six more increases in the prime and it the Fed rate, the Federal Reserve rate, okay? So on Thursday, August the 4th, today, 30-year fix for home buyers with good credit, 30-year fixed rate, six and an eighth percent, okay? And I just called one of my local banker buddies there and asked what they were, okay? Six and an eighth percent, who to thunk it, okay? November of 2020, my youngest daughter refied her home with a 2.5% fixed rate for 30 years. In May of this year, okay, my oldest daughter bought herself a newer home, a bigger home on nine acres. She got a three and a quarter percent fixed for 30 years. Both have great credit. You think you can get that today? In fact, when we did the closing, when she bought this home in May of 22, the closing attorney and the real estate agent for the sellers, they asked, how'd you get three and a quarter percent? Oh my gosh, that was, that was it's sensational. Who can get that today? How'd you do that? Well, we can't do that today. So back in the financial crash of 2008, the bursting of the United States housing bubble was due to the subprime mortgage crisis where, remember this? Fog and mirror, you were approved. No docs needed. You just tell them how much you made and you were approved for a loan. Well, that contributed to it. And there was a lot more to it, but we did have a big crash. Well, that's 
were, and that triggered the foreclosure tsunami shut down HELOC. If you, if you lived through that and you were investor, you've had this happen. And even homeowners, if you had a home equity line of credit, boom, you got to notice they're cutting you off. You got to pay it in full. They're not renewing it. Credit cards got canceled out the yin yang. The, the limits were lowered. Uh, a lot of loans were called due. And lenders went from fog and mirror to using real credit scores. And it was very hard to qualify for a loan, meaning fewer buyers. Well, guess what happened? When all that's going on, he who had cash, there were some killer deals out there. Now, in my particular town, in my town, Louisville, Kentucky, and in most towns, USA, I don't know about Boston, it's pretty expensive to live up there. But here's where, where folks took a bath. If you were on the low income neighborhoods, those properties went from 100,000 to where we could buy them for three or 4,000. I'm not kidding. Okay. And if you were on the higher end where they're building these McMansions, you know, six, eight, 10,000 square feet for a couple million dollars, you could buy those things for 400 to 600,000 back then. Okay. And they really haven't recovered from that on the high end because they're building smaller houses now. So if you were in the middle, first time home buyer, style of home, which is our bread and butter, cookie rentals, single family rentals, those things, we just had little ripples and, and things. We didn't take a dive. We didn't have the super duper appreciation. Okay. And, and so we survived through that and it was tough. It was tough. And, and so what was I going to say? Oh, the single family homes that was happened in the last five years, super duper appreciation with these low rates, not enough inventory, too many buyers, so price, well, just prices, the values of homes are just skyrocketed. Well, there, you're seeing a trend that we've already been enough into this new market where some of the pricing on the homes have plateaued a little bit. You're seeing them on the market a little longer. Uh, I helped my little brother and, well, help both my brothers sell their house and buy another one. We did that with Rachel's. We get four offers in the very first day you listed the thing. I don't know if that's happening now or not. You've got a real estate agent that just updated you guys with her own newsletter and things like that. So what's going on in your market in Boston, the Boston area where, where you guys um, invest in right now? So we had the financial crash. So too many houses for sale, not enough buyers. Guess what happened to the prices? Prices dive. Deals were everywhere, easy to find. In my town, we were having 200 foreclosure auctions at the courthouse every two weeks. I checked, last time I checked was probably two months ago. I think we're down to anywhere from 15 to 20 that happen every two weeks. Well, guess what? That's creeping back up again, okay? So investors with cash, they could cherry pick killer deals, okay? So you, I don't want you to feel like that you can't play in this game, okay? There's ways to do it, okay? And you got to find the different strategies, the buying strategies that you don't have to go to a bank or hard money or private lender, this and that. There's a way to play in this game. And I'm going to show you how to do this. So you're not sitting on the sidelines watching everybody else. So that financial crash of 2008 to 2011, um, odds, odds are you know somebody or two who hit the wall. They foreclosed, lost all their real estate. They lost their home. They filed bankruptcy. Well, we've had in this, this little uh, period, if you will, it started probably with COVID. Look at how many businesses were, our economy was shut down. It's just insane. So small business owners, they took a bath. They hocked everything they had to try to stay open and still lost it. Okay. So foreclosures, I don't know if you're aware of this or not. We had the eviction moratorium on the federal level. That expired July 31st of last year. Well, guess what was going on at the very same time that you didn't hear too much about? A foreclosure moratorium on all federally backed loans. So folks could not pay their house payment. And then when July 31st hit, well, guess what? The foreclosure moratorium's over. Now they can pursue uh, foreclosures. Now, uh, it takes longer to do a foreclosure than it does an eviction. But some states have extended that. But as far as the federal moratorium, that was over. So there's a lot of things going on here that you need to make yourself aware of to capture who moved the cheese and where's the cheese at, okay? Now, real estate histories, the cycles, they repeat themselves. 
And that's what we're going through right now. It's coming back. It, it might be colored a little bit different with different variables, but it's still the big picture, still the same thing happening. All right. So history repeats itself. I, I, I show you this little chart because I like this. And uh, this is true. And if you look back here, 1982, I think it was 1982, 81, okay, Jimmy Carter was president and I bought a house and I assumed a VA loan. Okay, for 15% fixed. And you know what? I was doing the Toyota happy dance, happy as a camper, because prime was 21%. Now, many of you aren't even that old yet. Okay. But look what has happened down here between, let's say, 2010 and, and today. Look at that rate. Golly. Okay. Bank prime loan rate changes, historical dates of the changes, what we're looking at here. And this is from the St. Louis Federal Reserve, I guess. But 2010 to 20 to today, well, actually, oh, it goes back to, let's say, last fall. And so prime was pretty low. Now, this spike here, I really don't remember that because I wasn't borrowing money. But that uh, I can't figure out what date that is on the map. But the point is, we've been up to 21%. Okay, I'm not saying we're going there again, but uh, you can adapt but we've been spoiled here lately. So current mortgage and refinance rate. So let's say you want to borrow $200,000. Okay. And like I said, I checked with my local banker here today. So last year, June of 21, you could get 2.98% fixed for 30 years and a $200,000 loan. Your principal and interest payment would be 841.05. Okay. Today, six and an eighth. 30 year fixed, your payment's $1,215. That's up almost $400 on a monthly payment. Wow. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to put my 1982 in there and my payment on 200,000 back then. Of course, houses are cheaper, but $3,500 a month. It tells a lot between these two here. And that's just a little over a year ago. All right. So now let's take the $841 payment and see how much money you can buy with it. Okay. So in June of 21, 2.9, that'd be 200,000. We knew that. What about today? Six and an eighth, 30 year fix. You can only borrow 130. You can buy $138,000 for $841 a month. That's going to affect how much house you can buy, doesn't it? Okay. And this, these, these kind of things hopefully give you some insights too. And then I got to put my 1982 in there, 21%. I could only borrow 47,000. Interesting. Okay. So chew on this. For the last 10 years, 30-year fix, let's say 3%. Okay. Homeowners average stay seven years. Maybe did COVID make them uh, stay a little bit longer? Maybe. Okay. Will homeowners refinance with the rates going up? Think about it. My daughter's. What is it? Whatever rate I said, it was pretty low. How many homeowners are out there got super low fixed rate loans? Are they going to refinance with the rates going up? Heck no, they're going to sit tight on them, aren't they? So there's a boatload of folks out there with it. So here's your huge opportunity. Where's the cheese? Boatload of sellers are going to have low fixed rate loans already in place. And you're going to get to help people. How? Solving the problem and improving their credit scores for many who are delinquent and behind on their payments and how taking over payment opportunities, okay? But only if you know how to do it the right way, using America's best and proven takeover payment system, okay? I'm gonna show you one of my real deals here, okay? So, and the one thing about boatloads of sellers with super low fixed rate loans, I don't know if I've, put this in a slide or not, but think about this. Okay. Every deal I've done has had a motivated seller. Every one. If they're not a motivated seller, it's hard to make a deal happen. So watch this. How about people getting divorced, people having babies, people having their kids grow up, empty nesters. How about burnout landlords? How about fires, job relocation, health tragedies? all kinds of things that cause people to become a motivated seller or want to sell a piece of real estate, right? Now, 
because the market's changing, does that mean that people stop doing this? They stop having babies. They stop getting divorced. They stop having jobs. No, that happens every single day. It doesn't stop. That's called life. And guess what? Those folks fall into the inventory of properties for sale. Interesting. Okay. So you got that combined with everything else. The interest rates are going up. So the pool of qualified buyers is shrinking. The inventory of available properties for sale is growing. Okay. And you're at the beginning of this, the birth of this. So now's the time to get ready for it. So let me show you one of my real deals here. This is one of my rental properties here. All I did was change the address. That's a real picture of it. And so today's ARV on this thing is 255,000. Seven years ago, it was about 100,000. Okay. I thought it was only five. I looked it up seven years ago. Okay. Seven years ago, 100,000. And it's a three bedroom, two bath brick ranch with a finished basement and a two car attached garage, double wide concrete drive, corner lot, fenced in, nice property. Okay. Pretty house. Never been a rental, owner occupied in a great neighborhood. Now, the fella who owned it, his wife was getting a little crippled up in her legs. So he wanted to buy a patio home for her with no steps. Okay. So he went out and bought that first. He had a good job. And then he wanted to sell this house and he wanted me to buy it. And I said, James, let me, uh, let me see what kind of loan you got on it now. He says, well, I got this here. Show me one of his mortgage statements or monthly statement or something. He had a seven and a half percent fixed rate loan. I said, James, I can't do that. I said, tell you what, if you want me to buy it, here's what you got to do. You got to go refinance that thing. And if you can get, get it refinanced on a 30 year fixed rate loan at 3% or less, I'll buy it. So <laughs> what would you expect to happen? Never hear from James again, right? Uh-uh. Guess what happened two months later? He called me up. Mike, I got it refinanced. He got it refinanced and he got 3% fixed using his VA loan. 30 year fixed. And so the balance on the loan, this was two months, this was pretty much the week after he closed on it with his refi. So the balance on the loan was $87,912. Okay. I stepped in, took over payments, $407.14, and the escrows and everything. I didn't have to refer give those back to him or anything. Zero cash to the seller. He just wanted to unload this thing. Okay, it rents today for $1,495 a month. Do the math. Is that a good or a great deal? I think it's a great deal. Okay, isn't that awesome? And, and here's what's cool. I'm a big fan of the self-directed Roth IRAs because right now with a self-directed Roth IRA, you pay taxes on the seeds to open your Roth IRA. And then anything that, it, that you invest in with that, all the, it's like, being a farmer, all the harvest, the crops, the profit, tax-free, 0% income tax. So I love the self-directed Roth IRAs. That's a perfect deal for that. No money out of pocket. And this is somebody that had good credit. Good credit, credit score. Wasn't a tragedy story. Or he just wanted to unload it. I told him, here's what, you can do this and I'll buy it. Isn't that pretty cool? That's a real deal, guys. So now. Everybody on this call right here, you got to thank this guy. His name is Jamie Greenwell. And Jamie Greenwell is one of my platinum member students. And he likes to attend boot camps and live trainings and just a sponge for information and knowledge. But Jamie has a little bit of a challenge when he deals with people one on one. And he says, Mike, when I'm sitting in the classroom, it sounds simple as snot, and man, it just sounds easy to do. But when I go meet a motivated seller and I want to do the jumping the loans, I go, blah, 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 blah. he says, I, I don't know how to talk to him. I don't know how to explain it to him. And, and so we were doing a coaching session in my office, and I can see Kelly smiling over there. And he says, Man, I just wish I had like a DVD or something that I could just put in their DVD player and say, Here, watch this. And it would explain it all for me, and I wouldn't have to worry about if I'm saying anything the right way or wrong way. I said, well, you know what? You're probably not the only one that feels that way, Jamie. So that's when I created the six minute video called the ABCs of Jumping Loans to show yourself, okay? And so we're gonna get a little taste of it here right now. I don't have time to play the whole daggone thing, 
Okay, but this is very, very powerful. And I've got many investors using this all across America who get into the jumping loan system. So here's a little preview of it. Let's see if this is going to play. Is it doing it? I'm scared I'll do it wrong. Can you hear that? No volume, Mike. You can't hear it? I can't, cannot hear it. Let me see if I can take my mic. Well, Attorney and approved by Commonwealth Attorney. Right. This is a proven system. So Mike, we, not, we might need the volume turned up a little bit, please. It's, I got it turned up all the way on my end, but I was okay. just going to. Uh, it's probably because I've got my microphone set on this microphone and not that one. Gotcha. Let me see how I can fast forward that. Oh, here it is. Let's go down here. And whoops. Oh, so I got to go over here. Let's see if I can hit the play button on this again. Oh, you can't hear that. I'm basically just reading this is what you'll see on the video. That's pretty simple, isn't it? So that explains that explains to them the pros and cons of it, including the ugliness and stuff. So we're not assuming that it stays in their name. And if they're super motivated, uh, what happens when you show them the ABCs of jumping loans, they'll say, okay, let's do it. Or let's tell me more. Or yeah, I'd, I'd be, I could do that. And, or they'll say, nope, I don't want to do that any, it, any way. No, I had no part of it. Well, that's okay. That's the purpose of the video to help explain that to them, how it works. So you don't get tongue tied. Okay. So let me tell you about this guy here, Randy Hammer. He's up in Brownsburg, Indiana, a 40 year successful investor. Okay. He's never jumped a loan before. He's never bought a property, taken over payments or what those other folks call it. Okay. He did his very first deal, his very first jumping loans. He did it in March of this year down in Florida. Okay. And he's already done two more in Brownsburg, Indiana. I was going to try to get him on here live tonight, but he's, uh, he's out on a date. But anyway, look at this. I'm jealous of this. He jumped a 2.1% fixed rate VA loan in March of 22. Wow. That was huge. It was in Port Charlotte, Florida. That's just north of Fort Myers. This is the house. That's the actual house. Okay. After showing the sellers the ABCs of jumping loans, six minute video, they say, let's do it. And so the jumping loan system is simple. It works, especially for doing deals in my Roth IRA. And he says, I'll never go to a bank again. And he, after expenses, he's putting $1,150 in his pocket every single month. Isn't that awesome? You can do this too, guys. Okay, so my point is this, you don't have to be, uh, this is a 40 year investor, so don't beat yourself up if you've never heard of this or knew how to do it properly, the safe way, the right way, the best way. And, and Randy, uh, he's just a good old boy like, like me and you, most of us here, okay? And, and so it works. So the jumping loan system, it's America's best and proven takeover payment system. I refuse to call it subject to because there's so many knuckleheads out there, self-proclaimed experts who are teaching it wrong. And it's the way they teach it, it's like playing tennis on the interstate. You're going to get away with it for a while, but guess what's going to happen after a little while? You're going to get splattered, you know, splattered, smothered, covered, or whatever it is they do at the Waffle House thing, you know? And so I don't want you to go down that road, okay? I want you to know, subject to, okay, is it illegal? No, it's not illegal. I guess if you did it wrong, it could be. Okay, 
The jump and loan system is the best and proven takeover payment system. It's not illegal if you do it properly. In fact, it's pre-printed on the HUD forms, the federal form for closing real estate. If you look at the old HUD ones, look at line 203. It's pre-printed on the form. It says existing loans taken subject to. So it happens frequent enough that they pre-print it on a federal form. Okay. And if you have the newer forms, I got one of these. This is from uh, uh, one of our platinum members from September of 2021. And line number three in this one says loans, existing loans assumed or taken subject to. So it's pre-printed on these federal approved forms for doing real estate closings. So I want you to know that this is nothing shady. It's nothing that's done um, uh, illegally, okay? And it's not assumed, we're not going to assume the loan, okay? You're not going to do that. But this is one of the things that these other folks won't share with you, okay? The landmine risk, do they let you know what the landmines are that you could be facing in the future? Okay, and ultimately, okay, be ready to pay in full if the lender calls the loan due, okay? So, if you step in and take over somebody's payments, well, then that's not against the law. That's not a crime, okay? But it is violating the terms of the promissory note that the borrower signed with the lender. And most of those say something like this, that if the borrower sells or transfers any equitable interest in that property, the lender can call the loan due, okay? And... So it's not a crime, but it is violating. It's a breach of contract, what it is. So the lender can ultimately uh, call the loan due. Now, has that happened on me? Mm, nope. I had one where I did a 15, where I took over payments on the loan that had a 15-year balloon, and they called the loan due at the 15-year, and I was hoping they would just continue to accept payments. So, But that was already built into the loan. So, But you got to be aware of that, Okay. And that is not something that you just want to, you know, try to hide under the table because that could happen. This is the most unique subject to system on the planet. The purpose is, to, is for you to take advantage of awesome financing already in place. That is the purpose of it. Now, can you see why this could be my second best ever strategy for buying real estate without banks, private lenders, partners? Okay or credit, you approve yourself. It's pretty cool. So inside of my system, you're going to get a fast start checklist, okay? The first one is due diligence. Does every property out there that has a super low fixed rate loan, is that one you're going to buy? No, it's not, okay? There's several things that you got to do. Number one, you got to verify the terms. Never, ever take them at their own word, a motivated seller. What about the lender? Is it somebody, today we do windows, tomorrow we do driveways? You don't want to go with somebody like that that doesn't have an established good reputation of being a lender. So there's a lot of things to do on the due diligence. And you, we've got this all sorted out for you in simple step-by-step. -step, here's how you do it, okay? And if the loan is delinquent, okay, which many of these are, especially with the market that we're in now and the, and the market that is growing right now, okay, if the loan is delinquent, well, then you're going to have to get the dollar amount needed to make that loan current. Okay. And you've got to get a deadline with that. So that's most of them that I have bought. Now, that one I showed you where James sold it to me and I, he didn't get a penny and I didn't have to make up any back payments. He was current. He was just motivated to unload the house. And I said, here's what you do. And I do that. Majority, the majority of these that I buy, the folks are a little bit behind on payments. Okay. Now, I haven't seen any uh, after the COVID crisis where they had the foreclosure moratorium. Maybe some people are a year or more behind. Uh, we'll have to tackle that as we come across those. But I'm going to hold your hand on it. So the seller got to vacate before the closing. No exceptions on this, okay? No exceptions. Uh, I've got a war story that I could share, but no exception. Move them to another one of your properties. That's fine but they cannot stay in the property that you jumped a loan on. And you got to learn how to write your offer properly, okay? And so here's a quick summary of your benefits here. Now, take advantage of these super low fixed rate loans, okay? They're out there everywhere, guys, okay? 
Your knowledge is what's going to give you instant approval. Your knowledge and expertise on how to use the jump and loan system. There's no application fee, no appraisal needed. I mean, you're the one buying it. You ought to know what the value is, okay? So your knowledge and expertise is going to allow yourself to give yourself instant approval, okay? Yeah, pending the cooperation of the seller, absolutely. No loan application, processing fees, points, origination fees, and all that. You can take all, toss out all the foreclosure hype and frenzy in the trash, okay? And so when these foreclosures start going up, I don't like to go chase foreclosures because it reminds me of a fox hunt. You ever seen that? How many foxes are there? One. How many hound dogs are there? Hundreds. And then you got the lenders wearing the red coats. They're riding the horses back there. They call all the shots. They make the rules. And I've seen so many times where, a, where a, an investor is one of the foxhounds. They capture the fox. They get a deal. They get a contract. And if they don't read the fine print, it says the lender, the red coats riding on the horse, they can still entertain other offers. And the next thing they know, they boot you out. No, don't chase them foreclosures, guys. Everybody and their brother chases them. I want you to go where there's no next to no competition. That's awesome. That's fun. Okay. Another thing here is we're not, I don't want you to view this as taking advantage of people. Okay. A true test of a motivated seller in a win, win, win deal. Okay. Now listen to this carefully. Put your mom, assuming you love your mom. Okay. If you love your mom, Put your mom in the seller's shoes, okay? And if your mom was in that same pickle, okay, if your mom's in the same pickle, would you bless the deal? Might not be the what you want, but if she was in that pickle and this was a way for her to solve her problem, would you bless the deal? And if you can say yes, then guess what? That's the kind of deals I want you to do, okay? You get to help people, and I want you to focus on that. You're going to solve their problem. Okay, because nobody, no good folks want to have a foreclosure on their record if they can't afford the payments or lost their job or whatever else is going on. Okay, so you get to help people. And ultimately, you are in 100% control. You don't have to buy it. Okay, you can be more creative with it. And if there's a ton of equity, okay, look at what happened in the last five years. So this $100,000 house that I did, you just saw a moment ago, today's value is what, $255,000? Well, if I were to buy that today and take over payments of James's loan that probably has a balance of $80,000, he's got a ton of equity there. So if I were to pay $255,000 and jump the loan for $80,000, it's a big fat check that he's going to walk out with. And think about this, right? And this is, write this one down. Any money on a check that your seller is going to leave the closing with, I want you to go after that with seller financing. So, for example, let's say, and because this is reality in the world we live in today. So you jump a loan on an $80,000 loan, but let's say there's thirty dollars or $40,000 that the seller is going to get, and they get to walk away with thirty dollars $40,000 check. Why don't you let them have $10,000 to go out there and get their head above water and go out and have a nice dinner and all this one. And, and you could go after, say, 30000 Let them walk out with a $10,000 check. And then that 30000 go after that with some kind of seller financing. Set it up with a 0% loan and so much a month or so much uh, in annual installments. And any time that you have seller financing involved, it's like having a four-barrel shotgun. Probably never heard of that, but we got those in Kentucky. I love it. Okay. And I, and it's just future opportunity for more deals. I could do a whole course just on creative financing there. So hopefully they got your juices going, Whoa, wait a minute. What's he talking about here? Cause there's going to be a lot of folks you're going to run into. who has got a tremendous amount of equity at today's prices, right? Okay. So a quick summary of what we covered here. So what is jumping loans? You got a better idea of what it's about now? I think so. How to identify an opportunity to jump a loan. Okay. So an opportunity to jump along a super low fixed rate, we want it on a pretty house. We want it in a good location. This would be on a property you would buy without jumping the loan. It's that good of a house, that good of a property, and that good of a location, okay? Do your due diligence before you make your offer. You got to do that. How to make your offer properly, okay? Your offer, remember, 
you're not going to assume their law. You're going to take over payments. Okay. And you can only make your offer only after you've done your due diligence. You need to verify how much they owe. You need to verify what's the interest rate on the loan. You need to verify what's their monthly payment. You need to verify the status of it. Are they current? Are they behind? Okay. Look and see if there's liens on the property. So there could be, you've got to do your due dil diligence on this before you make your offer. Okay. And, and then how to make your offer properly. We got that. And one of the, one of the things I see so many investors now keep in mind, why am I considered an expert? Okay. I'm considered an expert because I made more mistakes than you. <laughs> so when I say take control of your closing, Think about this. My, my attorney, my attorney's office, Borders and Borders, they're our region's number one closing law firm. They probably got 35, 40 people working in the back office. Guess what the assembly line work is, like working at General Motors, a car, a car assembly plant, or Ford, okay? These late, most of them are girls, okay? So they come to work after a weekend and this and that, and they're talking about what happened over the weekend, going out on the boat picnics, whatever. And they can do these things with their one arm behind their back and blindfolded. And so 90% or 95 or 98% of the deals, here's what happens. You got somebody selling a house represented by an agent, somebody selling the house, paying off this loan. You got a buyer coming in with a new loan to buy. It. So part one is let's get the seller's loan, get their payoff. Okay. That's, the, that's what takes the longest. Yeah. They do a title exam and everything like that. And then the new buyer, they've already got a lender lined up with a new loan to buy. Well, if you're going to take over payments and you don't take control of your closing, like I screwed up when I got started, guess what those people in the back office do? They'll contact the lender and ask for a payoff. That's giving the lender a heads up. Whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute. Somebody's going to buy this thing. We're getting ready to get paid. You don't want that to happen. That can kill your deal. Okay. So you got to take control of your closing properly. And it's no big deal. It's just a simple step by step. Here's what you do. It's on one piece of paper. This, 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 okay? And that's the way it works. Follow-up challenges and fatal mistakes. Now, I'll put this up here primarily for all the knuckleheads out there that are self-proclaimed. It's a hard word for me to say. But uh, self-proclaimed gurus who want to try to teach you how to buy subject two. Or they're clueless, okay? A lot of them are clueless. You know, they might have bought a duplex and now they want to teach you how to be an investor. So follow-up challenges and fatal mistakes. So I'm going to share with you some of the challenges here and I'm going to show you how they're all solved for you. You don't have to worry about it. So here's one that pops up, a due on sale clause. Okay, believe it or not, the due on sale clause, if the lender finds out, okay, and they contact you and they want to exercise their due on sale calls. I said, well, you can't do that. Okay, well, I've already done it. <laughs> I've already done it. And so here's some, here's some things that scripts, some phone scripts that you can literally just read to them and it calms them down. And uh, there's just all different case scenarios. And, and I call this having fun, believe it or not. So how to deal with the due on sale calls if the lender contacts you. Now, um, seldom do they ever say that they want it to be paid in full. And, and I've got special. So what they might do is they might want you to fill out an application or they might want you to do this or they might want you to do that. It's okay. We'll listen to it. And we've got all those scenarios scripted out for you in your workbook, your manual. Insurance. Okay. Some of these knuckleheads are saying, add yourself to the insurance policy. That's the worst thing in the world for you to do. What are we worried about as investors when we buy real estate? It's liability. So a good old-fashioned homeowner's policy, got very little liability, but you might be paying, you know, $100 a month for grandma's $30,000 diamond ring and personal property and all that. Don't use their insurance, okay? I'll show you how to solve that and do it without raising a red flag. The seller can't get a new loan. Now, I get this one frequently. So here's what happens. Like I said, most of these most of these jumping loan systems, the folks who you buy from, they're behind on their payments, right? So guess where their credit is? It's in the sewer. So when you make up the back payments and you start making these payments, okay, guess who gets credit for it? You don't. Their credit score starts creeping up and it gets good. 
And then they find out they got a good credit score. So then they want to go buy something, maybe buy a new home or buy something later. This can be even years later. Okay. And so they'll say, I can't get a new loan. So then you'll, you'll ask them this. Here's a tip on that. Talk at, tell them to give you the name and number of their loan officer. And the reason being for a loan officer, guess when the loan officer gets paid? Sort of kind of like a real estate agent. Only when the loan closes, right? If they can't do the loan, they don't get a commission, right? So I talked to the loan officer and I said, here's what you need to do, Sally. We'll talk to your underwriter and see what they need because Ralph is not making payments on us anymore. I am. Okay. And so here's some of the thing. It depends on the lender. There's no universal. Here's what you do to fix it. Okay. It depends on the lender. And here's some of the things that I've done over the years that satisfied the underwriters. Some of them want to see my last uh, six months of checks where I made the payment. Some of them took my QuickBooks report showing that I made payments these months. Okay. Some of them wanted to see a closing statement. Some of them wanted to see uh, either an insurance policy, canceled, che canceled checks. Today, we don't get that. We get check images, but it's pretty simple. Now, remember, your loan officer is on your side. And she's going to, or he or she's going to push that through underwriting as much as they can. Tell me what they need and I'll get it to you. And then once again, you've helped out your borrower slash seller. Okay. So that's pretty good. Concerns. Any other concerns involving the jumping loans challenges? We go over those. And then escrowed funds and how to correspond properly with the lender. Okay. Because you don't want to blow that up. But that is money parked on the shelf. Uh, to pay property taxes and insurance in the future sometime. So those can be some of the challenges you have, and they're all solved for you in the jumping loan system. Now, let me tell you when not to jump along. Don't allow yourself to foam at the mouth for the negative and greedy benefits. Remember the old saying, pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered, okay? So anybody that tells you, oh, you need to jump and take over payments because you don't have any liability, baloney. You've got more liability in my book because guess what? I'm going to make those payments before I make loans in my name. Make those payments. Because guess what happens if you stop making payments on that? They're going to foreclose on your borrower. You think you're not going to be in the trick bag then? Okay. So all these false reasons of why to jump along. Okay. Does it reduce your liability? I don't think so. Not at all. Does it reduce your risk? I don't think so. Not at all. Because guess what happens if it gets ugly and you stop making payments? <laughs> you got a lot of liability. You're going to have a lot of risk, okay? So does it make it easier for you to sell? Well, only under one condition. And that is, you're not going to sell this. If you sell this, you got to pay off that loan, period. No exceptions. And we've got some knuckleheads out here who are wholesaling properties, okay, where a seller... Maybe they didn't inform them right or what have you. They say, oh, I've got a, I've got a subject to deal that I want to assign. If you do that, you're right smack dab in the middle. That investor can't go get a, ugh, don't do that. Makes it easier for you to sell. If you're going to sell it, that's fine. Just pay off that loan before you sell it, at the closing when you sell it. Okay? So when not to jump a loan on a B or C loan? What if you get one of these subprime loans and they're, I don't know, Starts off 4% and then it goes up 2% for 10 years. I mean, they, there are some ugly loans out there. You don't want to do that. Don't jump one of those. What about adjustable rate mortgages? Well, you're going to have to do your due diligence. Is it worth it in today's market? You're going to have to evaluate that. Find out what the floor is of the loan and what the ceiling is of the loan. So if you're taking over payments on something that's a 3% loan right now, and it's a 5-5 five, five arm, and it can only go up two points Every five years, well, that means in five years, it could go up to 5%, and then 10 years could be 7%. Well, I would do that probably if it's with a reputable lender, if they have more than one loan on the property. So if they have more than one loan on the property, I can show you how to walk the other loan. And that is slick as not. <laughs> it doesn't cost you a penny. And what's cool about it is you make the seller do it. I love it. Okay. I've done that many times. And where other investors have said, nope, not going to do it, okay? If, they, if there's a balloon note on the loan, once again, due diligence, okay? 
And bad lender or servicing company, there are some bad ones out there. There's places in my town that have a reputation of ripping off people, predatory lenders or things like that. You don't want to get associated. Uh uh, avoid them like the plague. Okay. Cause they're not, they're going to treat you the same way, maybe worse. All right. And if it's not verifiable, if you can't do your due, due diligence and verify everything about that loan, status, terms, everything, move on. There's plenty more out there. Okay. Just because a seller tells you this, this, and this, trust but verify. You've heard that before. That's what you got to do in this business. Okay. Here's some must haves you got to have a competent title company or closing attorney that understands what you're doing. Okay, and if they don't, okay, then you're going to have to school them a little bit and say, here's what to do. Guess what? We've got the form for you to just send it in. Okay, we do that for you. You've got to have a competent insurance agent. And so many investors, they view their insurance company as the enemy. I view them as part of my team. Do I like the premiums? No. Okay, do I like the protection? Yes. Okay, but you've got to have a competent insurance agent who understands your real estate business. And it helps to have, like I said earlier, motivated seller. Every deal I've done said a motivated seller, even with banks, when they approach me and they want to unload something, okay, motivated seller. And remember this, you do not have to buy anything. And it's okay at a point when you're dealing with a seller on the phone or in person, face-to-face, -face, Zoom call, Google Duo, FaceTime, Okay, if they're being stubborn or something like that, you can just say, hey, Ralph, look, it's got to be good for me or I ain't going to buy it. I don't have a safety net. I don't have anybody's going to bail me out. So if we can make this a good deal for me, I'll buy it. And what's interesting is if you've done your uh, people skills, your one-on-one -on -one people, personal communication skills, right, you will see that seller, assuming they're motivated, jump over the fence and try to help you out. That is fun and it works. Okay, so benefits for you, one-time investment. For the jump and loan system now is what I'm talking about. Here's what it's going to provide for you. You're going to make a one-time investment. You're going to use this the rest of your real estate investing career. No monthly subscriptions, none of that. One-time investment, okay? You're going to learn how to use this simple step-by-step -step system to take advantage of the super low fixed rate loans. Cool. You get to help your seller by solving their problem. Remember a motivated seller? What's the definition of that? It's a person with the authority to sell a piece of real estate who has a problem. And selling this real estate will solve all of the problem or a major part of their problem, okay? That's what a motivated seller is. I didn't have that on the slide there, but hopefully you'll write that down or jot it down. No more feeling like you're stuck, can't buy houses, okay? I don't want you to feel that way. I view it as a brand new opportunities, okay? For those that invest in themselves and invest in your education. So you won't be sitting on the sidelines. Well, I can't get 3% fixed rate loans. My bank cut me off and this and that, blah, blah, blah. And a going rate for investors is seven, eight, nine. Oh, by the way, if a homeowner loan is six and an eighth, guess what investor loans are? Usually two points higher. Now, maybe some of the adjustable rate loans are a little bit lower, but I don't want you to feel like you're stuck on the sideline. You can't play, okay, because of funding. Gosh, there's all kinds of deals out there when you learn how to use this properly. No more worrying about interest rates, about especially rising interest rates. I'm like, bring them on. Okay. <laughs> Let's see them keep on coming. I don't want to see it hurt people, okay? But the rising interest rates, I don't want you to worry about that at all, okay? Will this help you? I want you to ask yourself this, especially the new folks. Will this help you get your 20 nice rentals paid for in three to five years? Absolutely. Absolutely it will, especially put them in your self-directed Roth IRA. That's pretty cool. Will you be able will you be able to see deals that your competition cannot see? And when you can do that, guys, and your competition can't see them, it's like going on an Easter egg hunt. Your competition can only see the blue, the solid colored eggs. That's all they can see. And you look around, there's a thousand of them. Okay. And you've had the training, the education, and now you have learned how to get the x-ray vision glasses. And now you can see striped ones, polka dot ones, plaid ones, rotten ones. And you look around and how many people have the x-ray vision glasses? How many other investors? Five. You don't have to run around and chase and be the first to grab that egg and all that. You'll be able to see deals your competition can't. That's what it's all about. And that's when it gets fun. 
Will this help you grow your Roth IRA for tax-free profit and income for life? Absolutely. Absolutely. So here's the jumping loan system. And I want to share this with you. We're almost done here now. Um, cool. So I sell it on my website every day. You can go there. And if you want, you can pay $1,997. And here's what you get. Over here on the left, you get the workbook manual with everything in it on how to do it. You're going to get the six minute video here of the ABCs of jumping loans that you show your seller. And then we got this fancy little credit card flash drive. That's what it is. No more CDs, laptops and, and computers don't have CD DV drives anymore. Do they? No, everything's flash drive. Okay. So on this flash drive, you're going to get all your forms, your training videos, watch over my shoulder videos, and they're separated into these different folders. And you got a fast start poster checklist, jumping loans, fast start guide, and all your training videos are all in this. Okay. To do this. And I've got more for you here. Okay. This ABC is a jump in loans that comes on your flash drive. So what you can do with that, you can put it on your laptop. You can put it on a tablet. It doesn't matter if it's a if it's one of those uh, Fisher Price tablets or Etch a Sketch. Well, Etch a Sketch, I don't think it'll play on those yet. Okay, but put it on your tablet, put it on your smartphone, and you can play it from there. Okay, and so nobody makes DVDs anymore, as far as being halfway up to date with technology in today's world. It's a six minute video that explains it all to your motivated seller. Now, here's something that you're really going to love. The jump and loan system, just like we're doing a Zoom call now. I've got a five hour workshop that includes a workbook and a study guide, and it's four Zoom meetings. This was a five hour workshop I did on a Saturday uh, about a month. Uh, yeah, almost two months ago. So it's real recent, current, up to date. It's four, it includes your workbook study guide, four Zoom meeting video replays. Now you might think, oh, well, it's not live. Well, it's better than live. You know why? Because you can access this 24 seven, anytime you want, holidays, weekends, what have you. And we got Q&A immediately following each of these four sessions. You can pause, rewind and replay. That makes it better than live. So go order it right now. And here's where you can do it at mikebutler.com front slash Boston Rhea. That's where you can order that right now. Now you're going to see this at the bottom of each slide as I go through here. And I tell you about your take action now bonuses. Remember the type of folks I like working with the folks who can take action and make a decision. Okay. So, all right. Now, one of the things that go hand in hand with this is my five minute trust system. Okay. That's how you get to keep everything below the radar with the lenders. So the five minute trust system, it gets you more than just the jump and loans course. This is a complete course on how you can control everything and own absolutely nothing. Do you think I have anything in my name? Nope. You can go Google search it. You won't find anything. Nothing's in my name, but guess what? I'm like Al Capone. I control everything. So I learned that when I was in the criminal ignorance unit, criminal intelligence unit, doing the undercover stuff, organized crime and all. So I took that education that I experienced firsthand, combined it with some other things, and I created the five-minute trust system. So what this does, it, it allows you, it's a simple system, fill in the blank forms, keep your name and your company name off public record. Wouldn't that be nice? It's your first line of defense and asset protection, Okay privacy. If they can't find out what you own, is that good for you? Is that good for you? It's good for me. So it's simple. Do it yourself. Fill in the blank forms. Hide your real estate. Not just your real estate only, but hide your vehicles. Your vehicles are one of the most riskiest things out there floating around, especially if you got kids. You let them drive around in a car in your name and they crash. They're going to sue the owner, aren't they? Ah. Uh, you got to have this system here, and I want you to have it because, remember, I like helping folks who can take action now. You can buy it on our website. If you don't want to go to Boston, MikeButler.com, front size Boston, go to my website, and you can buy it for $1,997. <laughs> now, Walter and, and Duncan might not, might not want you to do that, but anyway, that's good. That's a great, great system there that I developed. I use in my business every day. I did three of them today, okay? So take action now bonus. You heard me talk about the self-directed Roth IRA. This is a must for every investor, not only yourself, your spouse, your kids, your mom and dad, your brothers and sisters. 
anybody, okay, that's going to accumulate assets, they're going to get taxed if we don't put them in your self-directed Roth IRA. So why not do it and get tax-free profit and income for life? And so I know Duncan and, and Kelly, they know Carl Fisher. So what this consists of here, this is a home training system. It's got six simple step-by-step -step videos. The first video, how to open your Roth IRA, how to open it. A lot of folks know that they should have one. They don't know where to go or how to get started. So the first video is going to show you how to open your Roth IRA. The second one is how to fund it, making your contribution. The third one is how to create an offer for your Roth IRA to make an offer to buy real estate. Okay. And then how to control the closing. And so you might think, well, I can only contribute 5,000 a year, 6,000 a year. I can't buy a house for that. No big deal. But can you wholesale a house, get it under contract, and then turn around and sell that to an investor, pick up a quick 20 or 30, 50,000 dollars? I know, I know homes are very, very, very pricey in Boston. So you could do that. Okay. And then I have the more with this online home training system. You're going to get a manual and a workbook, all the forms. You're going to get completed examples. So you're going to get the simple one page offer forms and how to fill that out where your Roth IRA is a buyer. And on top of that, a full day Saturday workshop with Carl Fisher. And I tell you what, uh, I don't know if Duncan and Kelly know my good friend, Rue McFarland. He's probably a 60 year investor. <laughs> okay. And he said he learned more, more from Carl in a one day Saturday workshop than he had like the last seven or eight years of seminars combined. So this is, this is, you got to have this guys. Okay. It includes uh, examples of the forms, how they fill out all your how-to videos, a full day workshop. Once again, 24 seven access. Okay. And so when you find a deal, Hey, could, would this be a good Roth IRA deal? Bingo. You got it there. Okay. Mikebutler.com front slash Boston Rio. Now where else? Oh, now I got this one. We talked about the 20 nice houses. I've, I've been asked this a lot. Sorry about Bobo the dog barking back there. He's going to howl probably, but I'm going to give you this, especially for all you beginners, the greenies, even then veteran investors, how to get 20 nice rentals paid for in three to five years, even with your job. Now, this is a 30 minute video that gives you my blueprint to give you the 30,000 foot view of how to pull this off, because it's exactly what I did. And I'm going to show you how you can do that too. Okay. That's included as a take action now bonus with tonight's training. Okay. Uh-oh. And this is so good. I've got a 14-day ironclad guarantee. I'm putting my money where my mouth is, offering you a no question to ask, honey, money back. I said, honey, money back guarantee. This is so good. Here's what I'm going to do. Okay. If you don't like this, Get it back 14 days in resellable condition. I'll let you keep all the bonuses. Absolutely zero risk for you. Okay. And I think Walter's already signed up. So this one here, I want to have your picture up here on the next presentation I do showing where you jumped a loan and you got this amount fixed interest rate, fixed rate loan and show a picture of the house that you got. I want you to be up here on my next presentation, okay? And you can get yours now at mikebutler.com front slash Boston Rio, okay? And so this is not old news. This is not something from the 90s or from the 2000s. This was March of 22. Randy Hammer, 40-year investor, did his very first jump and loans deal, okay? You can too. Oh, and I've got this. All right. So you might say, yeah, Mike, this all sounds good and dandy and all this and that, but uh, I still don't have confidence in myself. That's normal. Okay. I expected that. So here's what I'm going to do. This is for the first 10 buyers only because there's only 24 hours in a day. So I'm going to give you this. And this is not like any other uh, strategy session, private one on one coaching session that a lot of other people offer because I'm not going to give you this strategy session. And for the first 20 minutes, you tell me your story. Well, it's wasting it, your time. So this includes a short prep sheet and a simple fill in the blank, probably a half page or so of what you, what your topic or issue is and concern and what that is. And that gets sent to me before we schedule your session. 
So I get to see this and I'm mentally chewing on this before we do your coaching set, your strategy session. So now I'm prepared. I know what you're going to talk about. So when we start to, your strategy session with me one-on-one, -on -one, we're up and running right into the meat and taters of the whole program here. Okay. And you can pick any topic you want. Yeah, this is for jumping loans. Okay. But you can pick any topic that you want. And what I found out is that most of the first 10 buyers that do this, they need help on understanding or putting the pieces together a little bit better on their jumping loans deal. And that's perfectly fine. So that's why I'm offering this to the first 10 buyers. Remember, any topic you want, okay? And this gives you maximum results on your own private strategy session. MikeButler.com, Boston Rhea, okay? And uh, so what's your return on investment? How can you use this? New deals that maybe you've passed over before, you ignored them in the past. Quickly grow, grow your real estate, IRAs and more. How long does it take you to put a jump and loans deal together and own the property? You can knock that out as a rule of thumb in less than 14 days, preferably 10. Whereas if you go to a bank to get a loan, oh my gosh, some people say 60, 45 days, 60 days, 90 days, crazy. You got real estate agents here. Ask them how long it takes to get a loan approved and run it through the system. Okay. So you can quickly grow your real estate IRAs and more, achieve your goals faster, do, do what you used to just dream about. Yeah, I'd like to have 20 nice rental houses. If you knock that out every 10 days, wow. And pretty houses you're not doing rehabs on, that's pretty good. It pays for yourself. Now listen to this. It's going to pay for itself on your very first jumping loans deal. No subscription, no extra hidden fees, no monthly subscription, none of that. So how can you not invest in jumping loans? Let me tell you how you can not invest in it. If you're not serious about your real estate investing business, don't invest in it. If you're not going to do anything. If you want to turbocharge, jumpstart, skyrocket your results, okay, to get you there faster to achieve true financial independence, this is one, like I said, second best buying strategy that I have used for decades, okay? Now, here's your chance to get it. MikeButler.com front slash Boston Rhea, okay? So, total value of everything that we just went through here with the take action bonuses and the real world values, I don't think I showed you anything that was overpriced, okay? Total value, $6,386. You can look at them going across the board here. And here's your take action now bonuses. Okay, first of all, the jumping loan system itself. We sell that $1,997. I tell you what, if I were in your shoes and I found this and what it can do for me, it, it, even at that price, this will pay for itself on your first jumping loan deal. How about the ABCs of jumping loans? Now, I'm mentioning that because that's part of this system, but it's like an almost done for you explains it to your seller how it works. So you won't get tongue tied. Okay, and you can thank Jamie Greenwell for that one. The Jumpin' Loans five-hour workshop. It's basically a full-day Saturday workshop, four Zoom meeting video recordings that you get to pause, rewind, and play anytime you want, 24-7. It's better than live. And I did Q&A at the end of each of those sessions. Okay, the five-minute trust system. Wow. Keep your name off your real estate, your company name, your name off of real estate that you own off vehicles that you and your family own. And you know what, guys, you get this system, you can do this and help your family members, brothers, sisters, mom, dad, kids, grandkids, whatever. You don't want folks riding around in a vehicle with, in, their, in their name, motorhomes, RVs, airplanes, boats, whatever it is, okay? Tax-free profit and income for life. This is what you should focus on, trying any deal, any opportunity that you come across in your real estate investing career. I want you to ask yourself, can I make this a self-directed Roth IRA deal? And if you can, do it, okay? And it, some of them just are not a good fit for your self-directed Roth IRA at the moment. But I want you to have that as one of your exit strategies. Remember, if you've taken other courses, exit strategies, when I got started, you could wholesale, you could make it buy and hold, make it a rental, or you could sell it, fix it up and sell it. 
Well, I want you to add another, I've got seven exit strategies, but I want you to add this. Could I make this a self-directed Roth IRA deal? And add that in your exit strategies and ask yourself that before you make your offer. Okay. The blueprint for 20 nice rentals paid for and do it safely in three to five years, even with your job. Okay. My nose is itching. I know I'm not supposed to do that, but uh, I don't have a makeup artist or anything either, like they do on the news. So the first 10, first 10 buyers, you're going to get that voucher one-on-one -on -one with me. And look at this, guys. All of this that you see right here, right now, $797. And I'll tell you what, you can thank Duncan for beating me up, twisting my arm, and getting this for you guys. So it's mikebutler.com front slash, front slash Boston Rhea. And let's see if we got, ah, oh, my nose is itching like crazy. Okay. So anyway, let's do this. Uh, how do we do questions in here, Kelly? You're, I'm going to need your help. Hey, Mike, you should, uh, as the host, uh, just be able to um, unmute anyone or guys just uh, put your question in the uh, chat and uh, I can call them out from there. Um, let me see. Um, oh, uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Mike, you're, you're muted. <laughs> okay. Am I muted are. now? I can hear you now. Okay. All right. So where do we start with questions in here? Yes, uh, down in the chat box. Mm -hmm. Where yeah, I've seen the chat box, but do I go up or yeah, down? You can scroll up and down. So there's one question here. Um, so when you're jumping loans, are you giving them cash as well? Uh adult diapers is the answer. Okay. Do you know what adult diapers are? Uh, no. <laughs> and did you get it? My diapers? Adult diapers. Did you get it? No. Kelly's laughing. I, I didn't get it. What's a famous brand of adult diapers? I, yeah, I, I don't know. Depends. <laughs> oh, Depends. Man. That was a joke. <laughs> You're supposed to have fun. Okay. I get it now. Okay, so the question was, do I give the seller some money? Is that it? Yes, sir. Okay, the the answer is adult diaper. It depends, okay? Take, for example, the one where James wanted me to buy his house, okay? He didn't want anything. The loan was current. I just stepped in. Did I paid for the closing, title exam, all this and that, and then he didn't want any money, and I just stepped in and started making payments the next month. So no, he didn't get any money, okay? But in today's world, in today's market, we're, you're going to find a lot of people who have super low fixed rate loans, but the market value of today, of that house, like the one I just bought, I showed you seven years ago, today it's worth 255000 So if I step in and take over payments on an $87,000 uh, first mortgage with a 3% fixed rate loan, they're going to expect some cash. And I'm going to tell you this too. Most of the time, in order to get your motivated seller to cooperate with you, to allow you to buy, to jump in their loan, you got to give them a carrot of some sort. Okay. They got to move. They can't stay in there. So think about how much cash you give them to help them get started over again, move on their way, solve their problem, whatever that is. And so I'm going to say in today's world, I would say that's probably going to be a minimum of 5,000. Unless you live in Boston, it's probably going to be 400 gazillion thousand. Okay. Cause everything's so much more expensive up there, but no, seriously, you're going to have to give them some money to get them to play. And it's going to cost them money to move and things like that. Uh, I've got different creative ways to pull that off where they, let's say that they need to move and they've got a bunch of trash and debris. I used when I got started guys, I used to buy houses that were butt ugly and hoarders lived there. Do that anymore. If they got a bunch of junk there, I hold back some of their money until they make it burn clean. Okay. If they don't have the money to change, they need to get a dumpster and all this other kind of stuff. And then if they don't get it done by a certain day, then they get, they, they pay a daily rent and maybe a monthly rent that's graduated, but there's all kinds of different ways. Most of the time on these here, you're, 
on the jumping loans, the seller's going to need some cash in their pocket at the closing. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I, I agree with that, Mike. I, I got to say the majority, well, I, I've done tons of these types of deals and the I've had to give cash to some, to some, not all, you know, most of them, you know, they were, you know, they had to move somewhere else and they didn't want to make payments. And that was one of my biggest um, findings. Uh, but when I did give cash and we're looking, and, and this was in, you know, North Carolina, um, mostly, uh, you know, and those houses were maybe 300,000. I, I don't think I ever gave more than $3,000 um, as an, an incentive to, you know, here, here's your moving expenses. Uh, yeah, but how long ago was that, Duncan? Oh, this was, this was, you know, ages ago. But, um, you know, I'm saying this is where the, the houses are a lot cheaper than, say, Boston. So I guess the next question would be is, are there better markets to do this in than, you know, major metropolitan areas? And then where, what's the key to finding, you know, motivated sellers? Well, I, I don't pay any money for marketing, okay, because everything drives, goes to my website. I'm a business cards, any kind of flyer brochure, and everything in my office drives our yard signs. Everything drives them to our website. And so that's where my motivated seller leads come in. And so then I get to cherry pick those. The difference between talking about you being in the Carolinas uh, decades ago during Fred Flintstone days, okay, is the price of homes today. Look at the appreciation that we've had in the last five years. Okay, so that house that I bought seven years ago had an ARV of 100000 say, then. Today, it's 255000 So moving forward, now, that's just Mayberry. That's Louisville, Kentucky. Okay, so if you take that as an example and try to apply it across America, I think you're going to see where decent homes, the values have spiked that much. Okay, some areas more, some areas... I'm going to say we're at the bottom of the barrel. Some areas going to be a lot more. So your seller, if there's a big spread in their equity, is going to expect more. We're not going to give them 100%. I wouldn't even say 85%, okay, because the market's changing. But if they're truly motivated, I would go after the big chunk of cash that they would normally get at closing, okay? Go after that with seller financing. But today to say there, you can give them 3000 and they'll walk, I think it'd be a tall order. Um, I think that would be hard to do. Okay. But I would say a minimum, and this is just me, I would expect the norm to be a minimum of 5,000. Now, if you get somebody super motivated, maybe you can pull it off for 3,000. Yep. I would encourage you to do so as long as they're happy and, and you solve their problem, that would be good. But, um, uh, most of the time the seller is going to want some kind of cash at closing and, I want to keep it as low as I can at closing and try to set up instead of them walking out a big fat check, get a smaller check. And then I do seller financing on the remainder. Okay. So um, for the people with little money, they could get this from a private investor. They could pull it from their IRA um, and suggestions there. Yeah. So some people don't have an IRA. Okay. So that's why the tax-free profit and income for life, is you know you're supposed to have one you don't have a clue how to get started and so that's what that is shows you how to open it how to fund it and then how to buy real estate in it okay and so let's say you got a six thousand dollar contribution to fund it you can't go out and buy a five hundred thousand dollar house with it but you could if you found the right opportunity to jump along okay sure. Sure. uh maybe you could take that buy that house and do jump a loan and then turn around and wholesale or sell it. Now we're not going to pass that loan over to a new investor. Okay. But if you can get it under contract, okay. And then buy it and then try to find an investor to buy it from you at a discount. If you got it priced right, uh, that, that would work. Um, and wholesaling, we've got just thousands of them in one zip code in my town. I get like, Ugh, too many emails every day on folks trying to wholesale stuff at just outrageous prices. And so I just put them all over in a kind of a junk folder kind of thing. But uh, if you don't have any money, 
I'm just saying, don't turn this off. Keep that parked in your tool in your in your trailer full of buying tools. I don't want you to have three or four buying tools you carry in a little bag. Okay. I want you to have a tractor trailer load full of different ways of strategies and tools on how you can buy. And what's cool about it is you can mix and match them. So maybe I do, I got jumping loans here combined with creative seller financing and something else. Okay. And walking the loan. And so there's different, you can take these creative buying strategies, avoid the banks. Okay. And do that. Now, if some folks have a HELOC, for example, or credit card, or um, if you've got access to cash, you could use that short term, not for long term financing, but to turn around and fix this. And let's say it's got an old people smell in it. Okay. Get rid of the old people smell in it, clean it up, you know, get rid, you know, clean out the gutters, make it a little bit pretty and turn around and sell the thing. And then uh, if you got it priced right, when we're going to buy, fix up, and sell something, to price it right, it needs to be 85% of what everything else is selling in that neighborhood. And I've been able to move it fast. I also like the hotel. And so hotel is you get rid of the odors, um, clean up Vietnam, around, cut the grass, clean out the gutters, and we put a for sale by owner sign, not my company sign, but sale by owner sign in the front yard. And, and so once again, using Fred Flintstone math, let's say the houses in there are all worth a hundred thousand. Well, I'll, I'll put it up there for 85,000. And this is in a subdivision of mostly owner occupant homes. Well, what'll happen is all the nosy neighbors and people who are retired, they'll call, oh, 85,000, oh my gosh. Well, that's a fixer upper to, uh, and so you got Lucille and, and Henry, they got a niece or a nephew or son. Hey, this would be a good first time buyer. It's a fixer upper, blah, 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 blah. And they'll come in and pay cash for it but you won't get an investor to pay 85%. So 85% uh, minus materials for the repairs. There's just a lot of different ways you can mix and match your buying strategies to where you become a, you've heard this before, a transaction engineer, okay? And you take marginal deals and turn them into great deals. Uh, I agree, you know, that, that's why, uh, you know, having as many tools, knowing how to buy, in many different ways is very important. Um, you know, I understand, you know, you know, focus is key, but you know what, when you get these deals, uh, you know, you, you have to have uh, options and to understand them and protect yourself legally and maximize your profits. So um, like I said, I, uh, Mike, I've known you forever. We, I've been doing this, you know, with your training forever. I've got tons of houses this way. And, you know, I personally, uh, leased optioned a ton of them out, took them over subject to and lease optioned them, um, which was, you know, fantastic because, you know, <laughs> lease options a lot of times don't work out and you get to redo yeah. them all over again. That's a gift uh, that keeps giving. That's what we call it. Yeah, the gift. Yeah, that keeps so giving. today the sexy slang term for that, we used to call it rent with option to buy You're right. or lease option. Okay, now you can buy something and jump the loan. Okay, you own it. You can still do a uh, rent with option to buy a lease option or do rent to own with a tenant buyer. Correct. Okay. But don't get something on the lease option and try to turn around and sell it on a lease option. Never sell something you don't own. And uh, the sandwich lease options, I'm, uh, I'm not a fan of at all. I've seen too many people lose their shirt and go bankrupt over it. I agree. The thing has to cash flow. So guys, um, oh, oh, put your question in the uh, chat box there and uh, let have Mike answer it while you got Uh-oh, somebody got cut off. Sandra Libby says, I wanted to sell after renovating, but tenant adamantly said they're not leaving. Uh, Sandra, you just need to grow a little bit bigger gazungas there, okay? Yeah. You're in control, so okay? Yeah, um, I'm just saying, guys, you know, if you're afraid to chat, uh, I mean, trade to talk, um, you know, put yourself in the chat, uh, the question there, and I'll ask it for you. I like this what Pauline says. Don't worry about the high rates now. Refinance later. Marry the house, not date the rate. Oh, uh, definitely, definitely, definitely. That is good. I like that, Pauline. Yeah. Um, all right, well. Uh, let's see. Pauline says mortgage rates are cyclical home prices, not so much, especially here in the Northeast. 
Uh, I'm not an expert in your town, so I'm not going to try to be. I just know everything's very expensive up there, okay? But I like to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there. Uh, a lot colder, okay? Um, so I'm down in Florida right now, by the way. Uh, let's see. I paid, Sandra Libby's got one. I paid cash via my IRA, 199000 I guess, almost three years ago. Value now is over 300000 Wow. Good job, Sandra. Okay. There you go, guys. One of your own right there. Living proof. Okay. So it's cool. And she did it in her IRA. I hope it was a self-directed Roth IRA because then that's tax-free profit and income for life. Good deal, Sandra. Um, Clarissa says no value. Okay. Uh, and I think that was when I was playing the video. Okay. Uh, Kay says there, let's see. I'm not going to read that one. Because that goes to the local folks there. Yeah. Um, uh, so I guess the big question here, Mike, is uh, do you know anyone who's done this in Massachusetts? That's from two people. Uh, they say Massachusetts uh, feels that it's always more complicated. And uh, what issues have come up with jumping loans? I guess it's if you do it improperly. But well, uh, let me say this. I cannot. There's no way in the world for me to keep up with all the laws in every single state. But let me point this out to you. Okay, in Baltimore, and I don't know if it's a city or if it's Baltimore, Maryland, or if it's the state of Maryland. Okay, back when the foreclosure tsunami was was hitting and they enacted a state law, I believe it was, that you had to be a licensed something in order to talk to someone who was behind on their payments. So if you're if you let's say you invest in Baltimore for some reason and somebody's behind on their payments, it's my understanding they have a state law that you can only get a certified blah, blah, blah to talk to the motivated seller. Okay. So, and I, I learned that uh, probably eight years ago or so when all the foreclosure tsunami was, was happening uh, through the last cycle. But, uh, you know, does Massachusetts have those kind of laws? I'll tell you who would know. That would be a competent, okay, real estate agent because real estate agents are required to get continuing education every year. And they would be up to speed, okay, on those laws in your state. And perhaps a, a Boston real estate agent, what was the lady's name that gave the uh, real estate agent update? That's Sarah Ibrahim. Okay, so I would yeah. reach out to her, okay? I would reach out to her and then surely Boston Rhea has an in-house attorney that's a member or a sponsor. Yes, we do. We have resources for a couple of different attorneys. Okay. So uh, they would know, they would have those answers to what is illegal uh, in the state of Massachusetts and in your city of Boston. Okay. And so just like my town, now, this has nothing to do with jumping loans. We're, I just want to do things the right way, the ethical way, and 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 clear what is 100% transparency. But our local city council just uh, last year added on like six or seven more protected classes in fair housing. So like source of income, convicted felons, um, I don't know, a couple of other things. And... Uh, that really affects rental property owners, landlords, property managers. So I'm up to speed on that because that's where my rental properties are. So I cannot, I'm not the expert for the laws in Massachusetts or your town. So reach out to preferably Boston RIA experts in those fields that I have your answers for you. I agree with you, Mike. I actually don't know the answer to that. I, I, um, off the top of my head, I don't believe that is an issue in regards to speaking to people. Um, you know, in the Carolinas, you know, it came to a point, you know, with lease options, you know, they they put stricter controls on them. But, you know, here's the thing is, you, know, it's, you don't, you're not restricted to just doing deals in Massachusetts or North Carolina. Uh, you know, you find a lot of these deals, and I'm going back, you know, I found a ton of deals just using Craigslist, believe it or not. And uh, they're there, you know, you have to be a little bit of a master at search and keep on top of it. 
but uh, you know, there, there's opportunities in every city state. So it, it, you know, it's just, just a matter of, uh, you know, expanding your horizon a little bit. If something doesn't go your way, you, you change. I would caution, I would caution your members to know the difference between marketing and advertising. Advertising means you write a check. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. It's in marketing. It can be free. So just like Duncan just mentioned Craigslist, I've got investors who have gotten killer deals off of Craigslist. And, uh, and so marketing, that's why I like to use my website and have everything else that I do pay for yard signs, business cards, all my staff, their business cards and everything. Our slogan is, uh, we buy houses, we rent homes. Right. And so my business card kind of kills three birds with one rock. So it's looking for good tenants. It lets them know we buy houses. And uh, of course we're doing commercial now too. So um, Barry has a question. Can you jump alone in commercial property? Okay. I'm going to say this, Barry, remember the due diligence part. Okay. Commercial property. If you're, if there's a loan on it. Okay. And it, if it's with a bank or credit union or some commercial lender, uh, I would just call them up and tell them, okay, hey, I'm looking at taking over payments on this. Can I do that? Now, can you jump along on a commercial property? So let's say uh, Freddie owned this commercial property and he sells it to, to Kelly. He sells it to Kelly with seller financing. Well, yeah, I would jump that long if it's an individual, as long as he keeps getting the payments. Okay, and anytime you have seller financing, it's a four barrel shotgun. All kinds of future opportunity in there. Uh, Jill says, do I know anyone who has done this in Massachusetts? Uh, Not offhand, but you know what? I can look in my gold diamond platinum memberships and I can find some in there. Um, So it works as far, I don't know anybody, put it this way. Normally, normally I hear this. Remember Baltimore and Maryland where they said, oh, you got to be a certified this. Normally, I don't hear anything unless there's a law there that says you can't do something, okay? And uh, and so Maryland was one of those. So I've not got anybody in Massachusetts that said, oh, we can't do that here, okay? Now, I've had attorneys who weren't. Uh, I've had this in Illinois. Sometimes you got to train your closing, the title company or the attorney. I had one title company refuse to do it for an investor. I said, you hired them, get another closing, get another title company. Okay. It's not illegal. Okay. Unless the state law says that that's once again, check with your local folks there. Um, Uh, Agreed. So um, Mike, would you still consider just, you know, assuming a loan, the same as jumping loan, because, you know, there's a lot of old loans out there that, you know, like from the military, the FHA did that actually are assumable. Um, and I think you you know people could actually get a premium, you know. Uh, well, here's here's the deal on that. Okay, a non qualifying assumable loan is what I did in 1982. Okay, well all that stopped in 1986. Okay. Okay, so you can't the non the non qualifying assumable stopped in 1986. Now, if you look in the paperwork on many of the new loans, okay. You will see in the promissory note or or the detail, the promissory note will spell out and say, this may be a qualifying assumable loan, or you'll have a paragraph that says this, this loan cannot be assumed. Okay. And they'll spell it out. If you look in the promissory note, that's why it's so important on your due diligence, but there's very, very, I don't know of any non-qualifying assumable loans that were made after 1986. Uh, but there's still plenty of qualifying assumable loans out there. Yes, that there are, but that means you got to apply. You got to submit a loan application. True. True. Yeah. Um, okay. So I, I don't see any more questions coming in, Mike, but uh, guys, uh, this is a great deal. MikeButler.com slash Boston Rhea. Uh, I just got, you know, just a little bit more background on, on Mike and how I actually got involved with him. Uh is that, uh, you know, I, I got the first course in, uh, Mike's been around jumping loans, subject, doing subject two deals for a very long time. What ended up happening was I ended up getting so many properties that I was managing myself. I got into a rental 
nightmare managing tenants. And then Mike came to the rescue again in my business with his uh, QuickBook chart of accounts uh, rental program, which is absolutely brilliant if you're going to self-manage your properties. Uh, do you want to say a word on that real quick, Mike? Uh, well, it's uh, the Investor Books Pro System with tenant tracking. Yeah, this was an awesome, uh, awesome product. Uh, what I found out was uh, I had to keep all my real estate organized. And I wanted something simple and I wanted it to be user friendly on my part. So I created the system for me. And along about 2000, my CPA wanted me, invited me to speak at a regional conference, high dollar regional conference for CPAs to show them how I use QuickBooks. And I said, why do I want to do that? He says, well, so they can learn how to do that. And I said, well, why don't I show investors how to do it? So they can save money from you. And uh, he says, I don't care. And so uh, that launched uh, the investor books pro system with tenant tracking. And so it's two company files, two QuickBooks. You got to have QuickBooks pro desktop plus. Okay. For 2022 and QuickBooks gone to uh, online subscriptions, what they're trying to sell you, but don't right. do that. Just get the desktop pro 2022 uh, it costs you about $20 a month, not a subscription, but let's say you catch it on sale to Amazon or something for $249. What they're doing now is they're selling an annual license. So at the end of 12 months, you got to renew it. Okay. And so they're doing that. If I own QuickBooks, I'd want to do that too. So maybe I ought to do that with jumping loans. So it's an annual license, but anyway. Uh, and so with the uh, QuickBooks Pro desktop, 2022, you got remote access that's free anywhere with internet access. And this is a system that allows me to consistently get paid over 100% of my rents every single month. Okay. And I've got workshops on that. If you want to go there, you got to drop in uh, Duncan and Kelly and Walter's name here. And I can tell that you're from up in the Boston area anyway. QuickBooksForInvestors.com. I've got workshops that's been out since. Uh, I've been using it since about 1990 or 91 and all those properties that I have, like I've got apartment communities I've owned since 1994. I could push a couple of buttons and boom, I can see their annual performance in each column of a, each apartment community forever. How long I've owned it. You can do it by month, by year, by property, uh, tax time, six simple steps and you're done. You can see a cash flow report. Anytime you want, uh, it's just uh, it's just amazing. So if you've got rental property, no more just late charges. Now you you're going to get 110 percent of your rents and more every single month. Yeah, and uh, it's just incredible. That's a short commercial there. But just yeah, go to it's quick. It's a look. great product. I'm going to tell you the biggest problem you're going to have with this course is that you're going to get so many properties. You're going to have to manage them. You know, if you're if you know if you're for your rental property portfolio, which I I highly recommend. I. I, I kept all my subject to properties and I either rented them out or at least optioned them out. And uh, that, that's how, that was the second product I ever bought from Mike back in 2004. So, uh, you know, I highly recommend that. Uh, I'm not an accountant. Uh, Mike just made it easy for me with QuickBooks, with the, you know, the chart of accounts. Yeah, we've got, processes and believe that. it or not, Duncan, I've got accounting firms uh, across America. We've got a little over two dozen of them that, sell the investor books pro system with tenant tracking to their clients and say, here, use this. Randy Hammer's one of them. his CPA. Awesome. That's how Randy Hammer found me was the, the investor books pro system. And so he bought that when he was just Googling one night. So he bought it. He did it. Took it in at tax time to his CPA. She got up from around the desk, came around, gave him a hug and a kiss. And uh, he said it cut his uh, tax time uh, fees, tax prep fees down about 80%. And she smiles at him now. And, uh, and and so I could not run my business without it. It's that how, and it's simple. And what's cool is it breaks down that communication barrier between you ever gone to Metro CPA and they say, da, 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 da. And you walk out of there feeling like, oh man, they just gave me a job. I could, it's going to take me two weeks to do all this. Okay. Never again. <laughs> Never again. Push a button and it send it to them. It, or it is amazing. But anyway, uh, I love that. And uh, it's very, it, it's, it's created by an investor for investor, and it yeah. makes sense. So, I, like a cash from me account. You ever stop yeah, by I, I got to say the other thing with your, you know, with the jumping loan subject too. For me, was, uh, you know, in the early days when you're brand new, uh, it gives you the confidence. Now that you did the video, I mean, you didn't have that back then. 
you know, I remember the days handing out CDs. I don't even think you had that back then. Uh, you know, we just, <laughs> it was just a matter of, hey, here's what you do. And you go out and say it. And uh, I'm like, OK. And people say, oh, yeah. Well, the then, investor book started on three and a half inch floppies. Yeah, <laughs> it did. So, uh, there's a lot of people on here who don't know what a floppy is, though, Mike. Um, so, you know, too young. We're old school. But uh, yeah, so I, I mean, this, this is one of the courses I used in the beginning and the thing works subject to, you got to do it right. You can't pass your uh, responsibilities off on it once you get it. That's what I've learned from other people. You know, the, these are great to these houses you will acquire, um, put into your rental portfolio and they'll just make you money quick. Like I said, I, I, I made, I, gotta, I use this product in the Carolinas and you know, it works like a charm. Uh, I got to respond to Clarissa's comment here, Clarissa McGregor. She says, I'm a realtor and never heard of jumping loans. I'd have to look into that. Clarissa, if you, I don't know if you missed earlier in the presentation, but you know what a HUD-1 closing statement, a HUD-1 settlement form is? It's pre-printed on the form. Loans yep. taken subject to, that's line 203 on the old HUD-1s. And then these newer versions, this Alta closing summaries you get different variations of that but it's pre-printed on that hud form as well so this has been around for ages okay it's just very few people know how to do it properly uh including real estate agents so thanks for making that comment clarissa and uh go look at your your old uh, closing statements there line 203 on the old hud ones is loans taken subject to you'll see it in there okay and she says, yes, I've never noticed it. Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah, so I don't, you know, this is, uh, this works. This works. Are there landmines with it? Sure. But, you know, that's what you've got to factor in. You know, if I don't do it the, the way Mike says, there's a good likelihood the lender's going to find out and they're going to call a loan due. Maybe, maybe not. But I have not experienced that. So good deal. What you got, Kelly? Uh oh, she's muted again. She's Kelly? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. All right. And did uh, Walter take off? Yeah, he uh, he's meeting with some of uh, some of the other speakers for his his big to do in All three days. Down in yeah. Florida. Yeah. That's where that is. Okay. So it looks like most folks have they've called it a night, and I guess it's time for us to do so, isn't it? Yeah, we, we normally go to nine o'clock. So you almost gave us an extra hour. <laughs> yeah, we appreciate that, Mike. We really yeah, do. Mike. And the people that are on board, you like to say, um, mikebutler.com forward slash Boston Rea to get that deal. Um, like I said, I've, I've no gosh, nine, two, uh, I, I think it's I think it's exactly 20, 20 years now that we've known Mike. Yeah, goodness. 2002? Gracious. Time flies. Yeah. Josh, don't say that, Kelly. It makes me feel old. <laughs> We're all only 40. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right. I'm 35.8. That's my age oh. forever. <laughs> okay. Can I ask Hannah and Scott and Victor something since they're hanging in here? Yes. Hannah looks happy. Hannah, give me an aha from what you learned this evening. Oh, man. Wow, you taught so much. It's hard to pick something. But I would say probably when you were doing the math earlier, I'm terrible at math. I'm an art major. And so when you were I'm doing terrible too. that, That's uh, why I no, three it fingers. didn't seem like it. It didn't seem like it. You were good. And I was learning. I was soaking up that information. It was really nice. Cool. Okay. Victor, your turn, buddy. Yo, I was going to say, I know more. Hannah has five fingers, so she no can do advanced math. Uh, <laughs> advanced, sure. Your, your QuickBooks uh, system sounds like it's awesome. Yes. Yes, it is. It, I'll say it's awesome because guess who I built it for? Yeah. <laughs> I job. built it for me. Okay, <laughs> never in a million years, never in a million years did I think that anybody would uh, understand uh, Investor Books Pro System with tenant tracking, but come to find out that's what actually – launch my butt into the speaker arena was that oh. product right there oh, man so good victor you ought to get it how many proper how many doors are you running i'm a tax lien and tax deed investor a tax deed and tax liens 
then tax liens. Okay. So the investor books will work for you. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, you loan money to people. No, I collect uh, tax money. Okay. Even better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good program there too. So I use the tenant tracking, not only for tenants, but I use it for all of my loan customers too. And it does both. Anybody owes me money. That's what tenant tracking is for. Okay. Karen, your turn. Uh oh, she's hiding. I'm here. There Give she me is. an aha. Aha. Uh -huh. no, oh, not that way. <laughs> um, I just found it very fascinating listening to you talk about all the information and just kind of soaking it all up and and taking it all in. So, uh, you see yourself implementing this in your real estate investing business? Yes, I do. Okay, good. Good. Okay. I forgot to ask uh, Victor, what was his aha from tonight? Everything, everything that you put on the table was aha. Aww. Everything. Thank you, Victor. I'd give you a hug, buddy, but uh, we can't do that yet. I'm waiting for us where we can push a button and travel through the internet. That, that would be awesome. Next but, year. Uh, Next year. Our track. I'll, let, year. I'll let Duncan and, uh, Kelly have final words and I guess we'll pull the plug on this puppy. Okay, guys. Well, thank, thank you very much for attending uh, membership. Reach out to Kelly, give her a text, uh, you know, get this product uh, for Mike highly recommend it. Like I said, I've used it myself and his QuickBook investor pro absolutely phenomenal uh, subject to it's gotta be something in your um, arsenal in your quiver to uh, be creative with deals. Uh, and I, I, It'll also give you the confidence to explain it and share it with other people. Um, so just make sure you're also on our newsletter list so you get the updates with deals coming through. Uh, we always have something new for you every month and we'll look forward to our next training next, uh, next month, guys. But thank you very much. And uh, we'll be signing off now. Thank Adios. you, Mike. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you we love Everybody. you, Mike. Right. All right, I'm gonna try to figure out how to where to go here. All right, here Thank we go. You. Bye bye.